For more, we bring in John Popio at the Gallatin Group. He's also served at the FDIC and the Federal Reserve. It's good to have you here, John. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It sounds like a hit could be inevitable here, don't you think? Well, I think that's something that they'd certainly like to avoid, if at all possible. If you look at what happened in the last few days, it seems that First Republic's confirmed the worst of our suspicions. The earnings call set really a motion, a, a series of events into motion, um, and in some ways confirmed the worst of our suspicions. There was absolutely a deposit, massive deposit outflow of roughly $100 billion, and the bank's business is suffering in a substantial way. I think not taking questions on the quarterly earnings call was less than helpful for the institution. Um, as normally an institution in a bind would seek to quell fears of its stakeholders, particularly its depositors, lenders, and shareholders. And I think they could have used that opportunity to better outline the specifics of the strategic options that they're currently exploring. Um, but that said, the damage has been done. And while regulators generally don't act on stock prices, they do take notice and things are moving very quickly in this particular case. And I think it's unlikely that the firm is going to recover either without a private sector restructuring or a government intervention. So you do not, a week from now, let's say, do you think this bank still is operating as First Republic? I think that they're actively exploring options right now. I think there are a few options on the table. First is uh, the First Republic could effectively wait for the FDIC to be appointed, do nothing. Um, I don't think that's a, a great option. Um, alternatively, they could explore surrendering their charter to their primary chartering authority. Um, it's possible they might use, use that as a leverage or a bargaining chip in order to compel some sort of private sector solution. I think if it fails, there would certainly be a bridge bank due to the size of the institution and the scope of its operations. So the FDIC would seek to form this interim financial institution where they could undertake a number of measures um, they, they would be bound by uh, preserving costs to the government, what's called the least cost test, and they would seek to actively explore a buyer and ideally a bank buyer for the assets and liabilities of that institution. Um, I, think, I think that alternatively, I know First Republic is looking to raise capital and sell assets. I think it's a very trying period to do that. I think it's particularly challenging because not only of the financial distress of the institution, but then also... Um, any purchase or would-be purchaser uh, would have to realize losses, which really leaves two options, government intervention right. um, at some scale or uh, a private sector bailout, something uh, to the tune of long-term capital management and like solution back that we saw in 1998. You know, it's fascinating, um, John, because the government officials seem to be saying, no, we, that is absolutely not the route we want to go here, and that's fine. That leaves the private sector where it's almost like First Republic's kind of issuing this this veiled threat of, okay, well, either help us out more now or you're going to pay more into the FDIC to resolve the cost of our failure. Um, which do you think, if, you know, if you're a big bank, you have a fiduciary duty, what should they do here? I think the primary dealers, the largest Wall Street banks, they can come together really to affect a solution that could augment their $30 billion injection. Um, they could act once more. Um, and seek to effectively convert their deposit stake into some for form of equity uh, in First Republic and assist in its turnaround. I think we all agree that this failure would certainly be expensive to the FDIC's deposit insurance fund that it uses to resolve banks. But why, John, and it's an if you don't mind oh, my jumping sorry. in, just, just as a final question here, what would be the impetus for the private sector to jump in and get equity, you know, trans transform deposits into equity or anything like that, for a franchise that's probably permanently imperiled, right? They're already potentially going to take a haircut on their initial round of bailout money, which, you know, their shareholders are probably not that happy about. Why should they step up more, especially on a day where the market is not showing much contagion from First Republic's sinking ship? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a really great question. And I think that's that's exactly the point that they would make to regulators. Um, to, the effect, to the extent that there could be contagion risk down the road, or there could be knock-on effects in the financial system, I think that is certainly would incite behavior uh, by the primary dealers, the Wall Street banks, to act. Um, they've done so in the past, and I think their injection of $30 billion was 
was done um, as, as in part to quell some of those concerns yeah. over the course of the weekend of March 10th. So given that they've already acted once, I think it's likely that they might act again mm -hmm. um, to preserve that to preserve that infusion and then also uh, reserve the right to bid on assets it, it, should there be um, a receivership or coordinate True. with the government to True. affect some sort of sector solution. Yeah,